you have your Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And you can also turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Now, don't pay attention to my voice. I, <laughs> I believe that everything will come through clear. Amen? Amen. We had a great time at camp. I, I want you to know. We, I want you to know what amazing kids you all have. We had a great time. You know, I think it had been. Uh, when was the last time we went to camp? Two thousand nine. 14 years ago, but Annette and I had a great time and we're still alive. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we had a great time. Had 47, took 47 uh, people and, and we had a wonderful time. And I want you to know that your kids are amazing and I just appreciate uh, the, the time we had to spend with them. I thank also all our sponsors that went as well. And I know Alex, you all got back last night and so looking forward to hearing how your camp went. So hopefully we'll have videos and things to report on next Sunday concerning that. Um, but, but I know you all had a great time and I want to thank each one of you for just how you sewed into different ones that were to, to help them go to camp. And I believe it was something that would, there was a mark that was made in their hearts that they'll never forget. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about Jesus today. Is that good? But as I talk about Jesus today, and no matter what's being ministered, we, to, we, we can't let go of the prophetic word, yeah. right? Amen. The prophetic word is 2024 is a year of progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion, and seeing our highest expectation fulfilled. Yeah. Say, that's mine. that's mine. Say, I'm progressing. I'm, progressing. I'm advancing. I'm I'm experiencing promotion, and I'm going to see my highest expectation fulfilled. So even though we may minister along different topics, understanding everything that I'm going to minister to you as a pastor is going to bring us to a place of progressing. Amen? Are you ready to progress? Are you ready to advance? Amen. Well, I'm not gonna, I don't want to take too much time reviewing, um, and I've got uh, quite a bit, and I just told our team in the back as we were praying, I said, you know, we'll, we'll go as far as I'm supposed to go today, and then we'll, we'll pick up next week. But, but we'll talk about Jesus, and, and let's pick it. This was the key, one of our key scriptures last week. Second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 22. It says, For the Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. It, it doesn't matter what, what, if you're a Greek, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew, it doesn't matter if you're seeking wisdom, it doesn't matter if you're seeking a sign, the answer, no matter what, always comes back to Jesus. You know, we, we always say, well, what did you learn in children's church? Jesus... You see, there's not a better message. There, there's, not, there's not a greater message. Jesus is the message because when we talk about Jesus, we're talking about our covenant rights. We're talking about the access that we have to heaven. We're, we're talking about our prosperity. We're talking about our healing. We're talking about our salvation. We're talking about our deliverance. We're talking about everything's been made available because of this man called Jesus. Jesus is, but Jesus is more than just a man. Jesus is more than just a re re religious figure. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And no man comes to the Father but by him. And if you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life, you need to make that decision. You need to make that decision as soon as possible because you don't want to go to a devil's hell. Hell, hell was not made for you and I. The Bible was told us that hell was made for Satan and his angels. You say, well, God, if God is so loving, why would God send people to hell? God doesn't send people to hell. People go to hell because they reject Jesus. And hell is hell not because hell is hot. Hell is hell because God's not there. And if you haven't made a decision in your heart of hearts and gotten things right with Jesus, you need to make that decision now. 
Because if you don't, you're going to continue to flounder in life. You're going to continue to lack peace. You're going to continue to lack direction. And you're going to continue to find other things to bring you peace. Now, that's not my message today, but it's good, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. But if you just see Jesus as a religious figure that you need to, that's over here somewhere, then you're missing the reality of what the relationship was always meant to produce. He, said, I will, he says, I will be with you even to the end of the earth. Do you realize Jesus is with you? Even when you're doing what you shouldn't be doing, he's, he's right there. The Holy Spirit's right there. Why, he's always wanting you to lead you into a deeper relationship. It's time to go deeper. It's time to go deeper in our relationship with Jesus. So Christ is the wisdom of God, and Christ is the power of God. We looked in Isaiah last week, and it tells us that wisdom is the stability of our times and the strength of salvation. So if we, put, we change wisdom and we train strength for salvation, and we, 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 take out, we take out wisdom, because if Christ is the wisdom and he's the power, then we can say Christ is the stability of our times. The only thing that's going to cause our world to become stable is Jesus. Amen. You and I have to come to a place where we are stable in an unstable world. Amen. Jesus needs to become more important. The word needs to become more important than anything happening in our nation right now. So look at 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 4. But you know what? Not everyone knows Jesus. And I believe also that not everyone that names the name of Christ knows Christ. For instance, what did Jesus say? He goes, well, we cast out devil and devils in your name. And he goes, you never knew him. It's more than a name. It's a person. Let's fall in love with the person. Yes, Lord. People have all different definitions of what revival is, but... I think just this came up in my spirit that revival is a greater awakening to Jesus. Amen. And it's out of that greater awakening to Jesus that you, then you tell people about Jesus. Let's look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, for the sake of time. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at verse 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, or you could say hidden, it's hidden to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. You know what Satan's always out to do? He wants to blind people from seeing the answer. If the gospel, the good news, the message of Jesus is hidden, it's hidden to those who are perishing. Verse 4, whose mind the God of this world has blinded. The enemy would love to keep you from seeing Jesus for who he is. And I'm, I'm saying, this is just, I'm not just talking about people that are in the world and, and that are of other religions. I'm talking about people that are even sitting in the church. Yes, sir. Sitting in the church and aren't on fire for Jesus sitting in church and don't have a true revelation of Jesus. They, they have an understanding of maybe their, 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 their father's Jesus, their mama's Jesus, their grandparents' Jesus, but do you have a revelation of Jesus? 
And the enemy would love for you to be blinded in the fact of, oh yeah, my parents are, my parents are, are, are serving God. My parents go to church. That's not going to cut it. I know these are some strong things I'm saying this morning, but we have to understand what Jesus was sent to do. The enemy wants to blind us so we can't see Jesus. The God of this world is blinded who do not believe lest. So why does he blind their eyes? So the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, it's the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. He, the enemy wants to blind, he's the God of this world, and he wants to blind people's eyes so they don't see the glory of Christ. That's to shine on them. He doesn't mind people saying the name of Jesus or even hear about Jesus, but don't let them touch the, the, I don't want them to see the glory of Christ. Because you, you could even, even have an understand from a religious perspective of the name Jesus, but not have a true encounter of the power of Jesus. And the enemy doesn't want us to see the glory of Christ that would shine unto them. What is glory? Glory, the first definition of glory in, the, in Scripture, the first time glory is ever used actually had to do with wealth. It had to do with money. It had to do with riches. It had to do with gold. So the glory is, is something that's tangible. It's something that is an abundance of. So when we talk about the glory shining unto them, meaning it's not just, it's not just holding to an idea of a, a person called Jesus, but it's, it, it's embracing what Jesus has produced, who Jesus is, what Jesus has accomplished. So the glory of Christ could also be this, healing power. The glory of Christ could be deliverance. The glory of Christ could be revelation. The glory of Christ could be grace. The glory of Christ could be the anointing. The glory of Christ could be the power to, to overcome sin and temptation. The glory of Christ. That the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For, now get this, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So when I look at Jesus, I should be a partaker of what Jesus has accomplished. I should be a partaker of the power and the glory of Christ. That light should shine out of darkness. What, what is he referring to here? He's referring to creation. What happened in creation in Genesis? It says that darkness was upon the face of the deep. You know, I believe that there's a gap between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2. And it says the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Where you translate out, as you translate out, it says the, word, the earth became in a place of chaos. It wasn't created in a place of chaos, but it became chaotic. It became out of order. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And it wasn't until God said, light be, that all of a sudden what was out of order came into order. So in the same way, in the same way, it says just as light Shine out of darkness has what? Shown in our hearts. So Jesus is the answer for your life going from chaos to order. If, that, if that's the case, so, so when, when I have the glory of Christ and I have a revelation of Jesus and who Jesus is, it's what brings my life into order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the, the enemy would love for each one of us to stay in disorder. Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Lord. Go to John 16. And so what aspect of Jesus are we going to talk about today? Jesus, our peace. I'm going to talk about peace today. I'm not going to finish this today, but I'm going to talk about peace today. How many people need some peace? Yeah. Only 25 of you. Wow. <laughs> peace. Yes. Or is there anything in your life that seems to be out of order? Yes. That means you need peace. Yes. Peace, as Billy Brim and Gloria Copeland had ministered years ago, what is peace? It's the one that says it's, the, it's, it's shalom. It's nothing missing. It's nothing broken. Yes. Doesn't that sound good? Yes. Ah, just lift your hand and say, Lord, I thank you for your peace. See, this is part of the glory of Christ that would shine unto them. This, this is something that we should be a partaker of. There is a peace that comes in this relationship with Jesus. And if you don't have peace, you can't give peace to someone else. Let's look at John 16. Did I tell you John 16? And I'm in Luke 16, so come on. John 16, verse 32. Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has now come, that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone, and, and will leave me alone. And yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. So Jesus is talking to them and saying, look, there's going to become a time where you're going to be scattered. You're going to be in a place of chaos. You're going to be in a place that, wait a minute, things, wait a minute, things, things don't seem right. The enemy is going to come and he's going to bring attacks in your family. He's going to bring attacks to situations and you're going to be scattered, so to speak. And he said, you're going to leave me alone. But I love how Jesus says, but I'm not alone. Now, you may feel alone, but I'm telling you, it doesn't mean you are alone. Jesus might have been alone in the natural, but he wasn't alone. He had the Father. Why? Because he was tapping into the peace that came from the Holy Spirit, the peace that came from his living, breathing relationship with heaven. So Jesus was telling us not just, not just uh, what to look out for, but he was also letting us in on the fact on how he became victorious as he walked in this life. He had to tap into the same things he's wanting us to tap into. Yeah. And it all came because of the relationship that he had with the Father. So they're scattered, and then it says, And yet I'm not alone because the Father's with me. Look at verse 33. These things I've spoken to you. These things I've spoken to you. That in me you may have peace. Yes, sir. Where's the peace found? In him. That in me you may have peace. It says, in the world, you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Yeah, yeah. See, you could be going through tri tribulation, yes, but yet have peace. Yeah, right. Amen. In me, you have peace. In me, you have peace. Yes, yes, yes. Go to Isaiah chapter 9. In me, you will have peace. Mm. You can be in the middle of the storm, yet have peace. Peace doesn't mean that you're... Peace doesn't mean that you're void of adversity. Because you can be in adversity and still have peace. And that's what you and I need to tap into. Isaiah 9. 
teach a little bit here. For the sake of time, let's look at verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. We could say this. For unto us a child is born. Unto us Jesus is given. And the government will be upon Jesus' shoulders. Hallelujah. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. This, this, this is his name. This, this is his name shall be called Wonderful. His name will be called Counselor. His name will be called Mighty God. His name will be called Everlasting Father. His name will be called Prince of Peace. When we talk about a name... In the Old Testament, we're talking about not just, not just the name like the name Justin, but when you refer to a name, you're also now referring to the way they do things. You're referring to their character. You're referring to their, their mode of operation. So his name shall be called, and one of them was what? Prince of Peace. It goes on and says, and the government and the peace will be without what? And Hallelujah. We can, we can stay in peace no matter what. He's the prince of peace. The prince of peace. This, this word prince is, a, is a, uh, a, a, a term that means authority. But it's not just authority. You know, for the instance, you know, they, they will call Joseph, what do they call him? The prince of Egypt. Of course, we know he's serving under Pharaoh, but he's called the prince of Egypt. Why they call him the prince of Egypt? Because he was under authority, but the key and the issue, the, one of the main characteristics of a prince in scriptural days was also that you were the distributor, you were the distributor of what the kingdom had. What was, what was Joseph over? He was over all the feed. He was over all the grain. And so what his brothers came to what? To get grain from him. Why? Because he was the prince of Egypt and he had everything that they would need in a time of, of famine and it was, it was, he was the one that would distribute it. So when Jesus is the prince of peace, not only is the author of it, but he's also the distributor of it. Yeah. He's the distributor of it. He's the distributor of it. This is part of his nature. It's part of the characteristics. Jesus is available and he wants to give out peace. He's given out peace this morning. He's given out peace. He's given out peace. He's, he, he can give peace in your marriage. He can put peace in your finances. He can put peace in your emotions. He can put peace in any and every area of your life. That's good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. He's the Prince of Peace. Go to Ephesians 2. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You're going to leave here today with peace on you. Verse 6, 14 says, For he himself is our peace. He himself is our peace. So peace, now we see peace just isn't, a, isn't necessarily a state of mind, but peace is a person. Peace is a person. But if you just see, oh, well, that's Jesus. He lived 2,000 years ago and all that Christian thing and that. No, no, he's Jesus. For today, he's the prince of peace. He himself is our peace. 
who had made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments containing in ordinances so as to create himself one new man from the two, what thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death that enmity. And he came and he what, did what? Preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. That's talking about, that's talking about time and distance. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. He himself is our peace. Not only does he give me peace, but he gave me peace with God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That relationship that was severed in the garden, how Jesus took, took and bridged it back together. Hallelujah. And because of that, I can stand boldly before God without a sense of fear or condemnation because Jesus preached peace. Yes. Jesus made peace available. Why? Because he himself is our peace. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Do you like the word? Do you love the word? Yes. <laughs> you know what Psalms 119, 165 says? It says, great peace. Great peace have they that love your law. King James says, and nothing shall offend them. Great peace have they love that love thy word, and nothing shall, what other translation will cause them to stumble. Hallelujah. So great peace comes from where? The word. Hallelujah. Isaiah 26 says this. It says perfect peace. Perfect peace. That, that would say peace that doesn't have a defect. Peace that has no deficiency. Perfect peace have they who keep their mind stayed on him. So if you're not in peace, it probably means your mind is stayed on something else. If you don't have great peace and you're, and you're stumbling or you're walking in offense, it's probably because you're not in the word. Because those two things says great peace have they who love your, love your word and nothing shall cause them to be offended or stumble. Then also says great peace have they who keep their perfect peace have they who keep their mind stayed on him. Yes. I'm telling you in the days ahead we got to keep our mind stayed on him. Yes. Keep our mind stayed on him. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 3, verse 16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. I love the writing of the Apostle Paul because it's not just some cool things that we can preach about. But we're letting, he's letting us into his history. He's letting us into his faith. He's letting us into how he operates and how he lived, how he operated in the midst of being in prison. And so what does he say here? He goes, now may the Lord of peace himself it, may the Lord of peace himself. And the one who is peace gives peace. It's amazing how we'll, we'll hang out with so many other things. We'll do, all, we'll, do we'll, we'll drink it. We could snort it. We could smoke it. You could work hard to gain enough money for it and still not have enough peace. There's nothing that this world offers that can give you peace. Because any sort of peace that this world could offer, or I would say an element of peace, is temporary. Yeah. 
It's the answer. I believe it can be the answer to to majority of all the issues in our life. If we could come to a place and say, Lord, I, I, I need to live out of your peace. Because he is peace. So I have to ask myself, when I'm not in peace, I'm probably not hanging out with him. And I'm preaching to myself, okay? Okay, why, why am I upset right now? peace. He himself is our peace. He gives peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Go to John 14. Do you love the word? Encounter Jesus who is peace. Verse 25 says, These things I've spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I said to you. Then he says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Peace I leave with you. He who is peace says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. I know in my life I was tired. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of not having peace. Because I would constantly try to go my own way, try to figure things out myself. But Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. And it's not as the world gives. Now, I want to take this in the direction that I... Because I want to make this statement that when Jesus makes a declaration... Let me say this. When Jesus makes a declaration, it's not just a promise. But the moment he speaks it, it becomes covenant. You see, because he's covenanted to what he says. So when, so when he says, my peace I give unto you, my peace I, I give unto you not as the world gives, all of a sudden now that becomes a covenant that he has to abide by and it's something that he has to stick to. Why? Because he doesn't change, he doesn't lie, and he always keeps covenant. And he only says the things he hears his father say. So when he said, my peace I give unto you, my peace I leave you, not as the world gives, it becomes a covenant. Yes. Amen. And as I start to close out here this morning, I want you to see that peace is not an emotional feeling, but step over and to see that peace is a covenant right to a child of God. Yes. Go to Numbers chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6. You see, everything that happened in the garden, because Adam and Eve in the garden, you could say, had perfect peace. There was nothing they lacked. There's nothing they couldn't do. They had access to everything that they needed. There was no sickness. There was no disease. There was no, there was no uh, guilt. There was no condemnation. There was no shame. There was no, there was no fear. So the covenant that God had made with Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant, if you look at everything into it, if you boil it down to it, it was bring man to a, back to a place of peace. So when he had a covenant with Abraham and said, blessed to be a blessing, in that covenant, if you look at it, that covenant had everything to do with healing in their bodies, peace in their emotions, wealth and riches, 
and that the enemy would envy them. So let's look at Numbers chapter 6 because this phrase that Jesus made is, is more than just this, this cute thing of, oh, I'll give you my peace and it's not as the world gave. No, this was a covenant. I'm talking and not turning. So, Number 6, and this is a familiar, the blessing was spoken by Aaron, Moses and Aaron. Verse 22 says, And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Remember what, would, what did 2 Corinthians 4 talk about? That the enemy blinds our eyes so we don't see the glory that's in the face of Jesus. Jesus is our present day high priest. Better than the priests of Moses and better than the priests of Aaron. And says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance or his face upon you and what? And give you peace. See, it's impossible to truly be in his presence and not have peace. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Jesus is the image of God. Jesus, it says Jesus was the visible and red representation of the invisible. Colossians 1.15. And here it says, for the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. So Jesus, God lifted up his countenance upon us by sending Jesus because Jesus is the image of the Father. And it says this presence of the Father, this countenance of the Father would do what? Give you peace. Amen. So they shall put my name on Israel. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. Let's go to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. You have time for a couple more scriptures. My assignment for this morning is almost over, and then we'll, the Lord's going to minister to some people. Isaiah 54, verse 9. This is like the waters of Noah to me, for as I have sworn... So when, when God made a covenant with Noah when he came off, it was a covenant he made that he would no longer flood the earth, right? So it says, for this is like the waters of Noah to me. Meaning just as powerful as that covenant by putting the rainbow in the sky, just as powerful that covenant was with Moses is powerful as this covenant that I'm about to read to us. For this is like the waters of Noah to me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be angry with you nor rebuke you. God is not angry at you anymore. He may not like the things you're doing because he said, Jesus is there, just receive him. Just receive him. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. Now get this. But my kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. So this gives us new light about covenant. And the covenant that God made with us that is not just an Abrahamic covenant, is not just a new covenant, but in that new covenant that he's prophesying about, it is a covenant of peace. You have access to peace. You have a right to peace. Go to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel 37. This is my first Bible I ever had in 1993. 
in his um, Amplified, and I want to read it. I want to read it in the Amplified here. Covenant of peace. Hallelujah. Thank you that you open our eyes. Amen. Ezekiel 37, I believe it's starting in verse 24. Now this is, this is prophetic scriptures here. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And, and they all shall have one shepherd. One shepherd. So when it puts one shepherd in there, I'm not talking about the David as in King David, but I'm talking about the seed of David. Or we could say the branch of Jesse, as Isaiah would call him. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my ordinances and heed my statutes and do them. Verse 25, they shall dwell in the land in which your fathers dwelt that I gave to my servant Jacob, and they shall dwell there, they and their children and their children's children forever, and my servant David shall be their prince forever. See, this is talking about Jesus. This is prophesying about Jesus. Jesus is the prince of peace. Verse 26 says, I will make a covenant of peace with them. I will make a covenant of peace with them. So this one shepherd who's going to be a prince forever is going to make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant. Everlasting covenant with them. Get this. And I will give blessings to them and multiply them and I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them. Well, wait a minute. We talk about going into God's sanctuary. But according to this, this one shepherd, this prince, is going to come into our sanctuary. And the prince of peace wants to come into our sanctuary. And what does the prince of peace do? He gives peace. Every Sunday, no matter what message might be going forward, forward we're in the presence of the one who gives peace. The one who made a covenant of peace that's everlasting forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will give blessings to them, will multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them. What forevermore? Verse 27, my tabernacle or dwelling place also shall be with them. Now think about it. This is a di we talk about, hey, we're going to go and, and dwell in his presence. Wow. But look at this. He says, he says, my tabernacle or dwelling place shall be with them. Hallelujah. And they what shall be my people. Verse 28, then the nation shall know. Meaning the world should see something. The nation should see something. So because of the covenant of peace, because of the, the prince of peace in our sanctuary, sanctuary, dwelling in the midst of our sanctuary, being in the midst of our dwelling place, the nation should see something. The nation should see something on heritage of faith. The nation should see something on Justin Bridges. The nation should see something on Vic Boone. The nation should see something. And what, is it, what does it say? The nation shall know. Understand and realize, I, the Lord, do set apart and consecrate Israel for holy use. Now get this. When my sanctuary shall be in their midst forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The I tell you, the world's going to see something on hair of faith in these yeah. days ahead. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Because our world needs peace today. Amen? Amen. A covenant of peace. Let me close with this. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. And then I'll read this in the Amplified as well. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Father. Danny, worship team, you can come up. Hmm. 
Hebrews 13. If you don't have the Amplified, just read it on the screen. Hallelujah. I think it's verse 20. It says, Now may the God of peace, who is the author and the giver of peace, who brought again from among the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood that sealed and ratified the everlasting agreement, the covenant, the testament, Verse 21. So what does this God of peace, the God of peace do? Verse 21, what does he do? He says, strengthen, complete, and perfect, and make you what you ought to be. What does this covenant of peace do? It strengthens you. It completes you. It perfects you. And makes you what you ought to be. Some of you may feel like you're inferior to the calling on your life. But you need to receive this morning that the covenant of peace, it strengthens you, it completes you, and perfects you, and makes you what you ought to be. You may say, well, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how this is going to happen. And, and Lord, what about this and what about that? The covenant of peace will strengthen you, complete, perfect you, and make you what you ought to be. Well, pastor, I keep failing. I keep messing up. I keep going back. I keep letting down other people. I keep letting down myself. The covenant of peace will strengthen you, complete you, perfect you, and make you what you ought to be. So what does this peace also do? It says strengthen you, complete you, perfect you, make you what you ought to be, and equip you with everything good. Equip you with everything good that you can carry out his will. Woo! I'm telling you, the peace of God will equip you with everything that's good to carry out the will of God on your life. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This is the peace of God, yes, is to equip you and help you carry out the will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Equip you with everything good. Hallelujah. Man, peace gives me everything that's good, yes. that you may carry out his will. Now, get this. While he himself, and who is he? He's peace. Uh -huh. While he himself works in you uh -huh. and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ the Messiah, to whom be glory forever and ever to the age of the ages. Amen. So be it. Stand to your feet. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's three things I heard from the Lord this morning. I wrote, just wrote them down in my, so I can read my writing here. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, Lord. Everyone be seated real quick. Sorry. Thank you, Father. If you're here, I'm talking about peace. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Justin... I'm waiting for promises. I'm waiting for promises to be fulfilled in my life. And I too often live in places of confusion. I too often live in a place of torment because things aren't happening in my time frame. I'm not progressing, I'm not advancing, I'm not seeing things take place. And I need the peace of God. Because it's the peace of God that is going to equip you. It's the peace of God that's going to strengthen you. If that's you, I have a couple other things I'm supposed to call out here in a minute as well. But if that's you, I want you to stand to your feet.
Can you place your hand on someone that's around you? Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. There's a scripture the Lord wants me to give with each one of these things. And it's a word for you to war with. And the scripture is, uh, was given was Joshua 21, verse 43. So the Lord, so we could also say peace. So peace gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn to give to their fathers. And they took possession of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave them rest all around. You can say the Lord gave them peace all around according to all that he had sworn to their fathers. And not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered Peace delivered all their enemies into their hand. Yes. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. Now get this, and not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel all came to pass. Yes. Glory to God. Now this is a word that you need to war with. That everything God spoke to you is going to come to pass. Yes. And as you war with this scripture, you're going to now live and operate out of the peace that comes from his word. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I thank you. Hallelujah that your arm is not short. I thank you that you are a God. Hallelujah, that is more than enough. And I just thank you, Lord, for the peace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, every person that's standing up right now, every person that's watching by way of internet that's standing and waiting upon the promises of God. Hallelujah, I declare, Father, that you said, my peace I give you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. I thank you for peace. Peace that will cause them to persevere. Peace that will cause them to be strong. Peace that will cause them, hallelujah, to be, to, to be uh, un, uh, unshaken, unshaken in the midst of adversity. Prosperity come forth. Hallelujah. Opportunities come forth. Hallelujah. It's time for the vision to speak. Hallelujah. It's time for the vision to speak. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that, that as we're operating and standing upon promises and promises, the promises of God, I thank you, Lord, the peace of God. Hallelujah is our guard. The peace of God is what strengthens us on the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peace come upon them. Hallelujah. Let your peace come upon them. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I will make room for you. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, Lord. The next thing I heard, the Holy Spirit about peace was The enemy's trying to control you through other people. The enemy's trying to control you by words. The enemy's trying to co control you. And you've tried all, all you can. You've tried all you can to do, do, do what you can to make it right. But it's just this, this thing in your heart that you can't get free from. And because there's still part of your mind, well, maybe I was wrong, or maybe it was this, or or maybe that. And and you're taking personal blame for things and and those types of things. In one case, it's a it, it is a it is a lawsuit. In some cases, it's with family. In some cases, it's with a church you used to go to. And you're carrying, and you're carrying uh, disappointment, and you're carrying hurt because of these relationships. And, and God wants you to leave here today with peace on you. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet. And the Lord gave me a, a word, a scripture. It's found in Romans chapter 12, verse 17. It says, repay no one evil for evil. Yeah. It says, have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Now, verse 18, 
if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. It doesn't say depending on other people. You aren't responsible for other people's emotions. You're not responsible for other people's responses. And you're trying to manage everyone else, and you're trying to manage things, and the Lord says you need to stop right now. You've done what you can do, and he says this. He goes, live peaceably with all men, as much as depends on you. You can't, you can't help if they don't receive your peace. They can't help if you don't, they don't receive your forgiveness. They, they, you can't help that. But then it says this, live peaceably with all men. Then this is what got me. Verse 19 says, beloved, do not avenge yourself. Amen. Now stop there because it talks about the, that the Lord will repay. But this scripture, is, avenge here is not talking about violence. That's right. That's right. So live peaceably with all men as depends on you. But then it says this, beloved, don't avenge yourself. This is the other thing the Lord told me to tell each one of you that, that this deals with. He goes, stop defending yourself. That word avenge means defend. Stop trying to defend yourself. It's their problem, not yours. Now, if you know that you know that you know that you were in the wrong, you need to make it right. But if you know that you did things out of the integrity and the honesty of your heart... He says, live, live peaceably with all. And it could, be, it could be a parent. You might have challenges with, 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 with a parent, and, and you're not sure how to deal with it. You live peaceably. And don't try to defend yourself. Let God be your defense. Let God be your defender. Mm. Wow. Mm. I just sense a release. <laughs> that was a release, a spiritual release. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That stronghold is broken over you. That stronghold is broken over you. Lord, we pray for that person. We pray for that person, Lord, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. We pray that they would have an encounter with him who is peace. Lord, we speak judgment over no one. Lord, we declare actually, Lord, you said in your word, we declare mercy over judgment. Lord, I ask your mercy over them. I ask your mercy over them. Hallelujah, that your loving arms would wrap around them right now and bring peace to them to where they can go forward and where the enemy has blinded their eyes and blinded their minds to see things in wrong ways. Lord, I declare that they would have a revelation of Jesus who is freedom. We speak blessing over them. We don't speak cursing over them. We speak blessing over them. In Jesus' name. Can we just give him praise for a minute? Hallelujah. 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 And this is the last thing that I heard in my spirit. Go ahead and everyone stand to your feet. I'm just following the Holy Spirit. The last thing the Lord spoke to me was to call out this. You're unsure about your future. You have great fear about your future. Fear of the unknown. If that's you, 
I sense more of this to deal with high school, college. But I mean, it's, I, I know it deals with a lot more than that as well. And if that's you, do you have a, just a fear of the future, a fear of the unknown? You're not sure. You're Just put your hand on your heart. In 1993, after I got healed of a respiratory disease, and I knew that I knew that I knew, the Lord told me, he said, he said, Justin, I want you to move. I want you to go to Salisbury, Maryland. And I was like, Lord, but all my friends are here. And he goes, Justin, he goes, where, where you're going, your friends can't take you. What I have for you, your friends can't take you there. And I was so unsure. I was like, I, I, leaving, leaving home, 19 years of age, I was like leaving, not sure what was going on. I mean, I, God healed my body and, and all that. And so, but there was, this, there was just this knowing on the inside of me that once he spoke to me and I knew it was the right thing, there was this peace that even when I didn't have a job yet, even when things didn't look right yet, things are like, what's going to happen? And all the questions I had, there was still this settled peace on the inside of me. Why? Because I encountered him who was peace. Almost seven years later, the Lord says, I want you to leave your job. I want you to leave. I was just short of being fully vested in the company that I was working at. It was like three weeks shy of being fully vested, which means I could draw out a huge amount of money whenever I wanted. And I was like, Lord, why can't I go to Bible school next year? Because, hey, I'd be fully invested, and, hey, I could take that money, and that'd be, that'd be, that, that'd be for the kingdom. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit said, no, there won't be an opportunity a year from now. And so I moved to Texas, not knowing anything. Not knowing, never leaving the state of Maryland and not knowing, well, God, what do you have for my life? I, all I would tell people is like, I'm going to Bible school and I'm going to Africa. That was what I'd tell people. Honestly, I had no clue. I was, I'm going to Bible school. But as soon as I made the decision in my heart, there was peace. Even when I had questions rise up on the other side and try, I, it was like, no, there was still this peace that, yeah, this is my fresh start. This is the new start. This is it. And there was peace. I'm saying all that to say this is you don't have to have it all figured out to have peace. Actually, 99% of the time, 99.9%, .9 you're not going to have it all figured out at all anyway. Because if I fully saw what, what I've done over the last 25 years, I probably would be like... Who, me? Don't be afraid of your future. God loves you too much to leave you. God loves you too much. If you're, if you're saying, Lord, I, I, I sense in my heart this is the right thing, and you're determined to follow him, I'm telling you, he's not, he's not going to let you be disappointed. It's when we allow our emotions to, to set in and, and all that and trying to control it. Surrender is about, God, I give you total control. Yes. Hallelujah. The scripture, <laughs> Jeremiah, 29, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts of plans of what? Peace. And not evil. To give you hope in your final outcome. Just put your hand on your heart if that's you. Father, I just thank you for a peace. A peace that passes all understanding. One way to tap into peace is praying in the Spirit. 
Isaiah tells us with a stammering lips and another tongue, it says, will give their people rest. I declare that they will not fear their future, but their only fear will be out, being out of the will of God. And as they step into new seasons, as they step into new territories, as they do the things that you place on the inside of their hearts, I thank you for flooding them with your peace now. Because it's your peace you give us, and it's not as the world gives. Peace. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you for your peace resting upon every person in this place. Hallelujah. Mm. So, Lord, today we go in that peace. Mm. Peace, peace, peace. Mm. Mm. Say this after me, Lord. I receive your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and give them a shout of praise if you receive this word today.